I call the member for Fraser. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. The government has made quite clear that we support the spirit of this motion. We've made clear our opposition to the EU's unilateral action on international aviation on a number of occasions and in a number of fora. We've done that through meetings, letters between Australian government and EU ministers, and through the Australia-EU senior officials' talks on climate change. The International Civil Aviation Organisation, ICAO, is the main forum through which countries negotiate an agreement on limiting emissions. We have made our position very clear at the most recent meeting of that organisation. We asked the EU to hold off on their expansion of the EU ETS on international aviation. We want to work together with all ICAO members, including the EU, toward a binding sectoral agreement for the industry. Uh, and that is indeed the, uh, the sensible approach to be taking in terms of climate change and aviation. We support a market-based mechanism. Uh, and that uh, market-based mechanism uh, we, under we support because we understand uh, that it is the most efficient and effective way of reducing emissions and dealing with dangerous climate change. So the Department of Infrastructure and Transport is working with a range of ICAO representatives to seek resolution of the issue. We're working with representatives of Brazil, Canada, Japan, Korea, Mexico, Nigeria, Singapore, the UAE and the US, as well as European and industry representatives. That approach of working through ICAO is much better than whatever uh, the, uh, the Honourable Member means when he says in his motion of Part 2C, uh, joining any international action. Deputy Speaker, our approach to uh, climate change is a market-based one, but it's one that also supports households. It was my pleasure yesterday to host a morning tea for the Prime Minister uh, and the Minister for Families, Community Services and Indigenous Affairs uh, in Amaru. Uh, at that morning tea, uh, we had together a group of Canberra pensioners, Estelle Griffin, Trish Roberts, Susan Cook, Pat Corbett, John and Cathy Bonnet, Janice and Fred, Ho Fred Hodgkin, and Ada and Hank Dupuy. And it was an opportunity for those pensioners uh, to hear firsthand from the Prime Minister and the Minister for Families and Community Services uh, about how Labor is helping pensioners, about how we are ensuring that pensioners not only have household assistance uh, that will allow them to deal with the modest price rises, 0.7% uh, on the C CPI, uh, but also will give them a buffer to ensure that millions of Australian pensioners, uh, even after accounting for the changes in costs that flow from the carbon price, even without changing their behaviour, because none of our modelling assumes uh, the behavioural change, which we know is likely to take place, uh, they will still have a buffer. Uh, I want to thank uh, Gassima Olney, John Olney, Penny Hardy, Margaret Ryan and Lyndall Tuddy uh, for their hard work uh, on pulling together uh, that morning tea, uh, giving a, a really valuable opportunity uh, for Canberra pensioners uh, to speak directly with the Prime Minister. Uh, and the Prime Minister was asked directly uh, what will happen when, uh, when costs, go, costs go up. Uh, and she responded, well, yes, it is true that there will be electricity price effects, uh, not the 30 per cent effects that the opposition has been talking about, uh, but effects that we've modelled uh, at around 10, 10 per cent, uh, around $3 a week for the typical household. Uh, but these increases in uh, pensions and allowances, uh, assistance that pensioners will see flowing into their bank accounts uh, from today and over the coming weeks uh, will ensure that Australian pension pensioners uh, are able to uh, deal with the price changes that will flow from pricing carbon. Uh, and I know that so many Canberra pensioners uh, are committed to putting a price on carbon pollution. Uh, they recognise, uh, as do Conservative governments in the UK and New Zealand, uh, as did uh, the, the Australian uh, Liberal and National parties up until the 2007 election and uh, past that up until the change of leadership in the Liberal Party, that putting a price on carbon pollution is the most efficient and effective way of dealing with dangerous climate change. And they recognise that the household assistance, uh, half the money raised from the carbon price will go to household assistance, uh, is the appropriate way of making sure that Australian households are able to deal with the modest price changes that will flow from carbon pollution. 
They know that come the 1st of July, towns won't be wiped Order. off the map, Order. changes the won't be catastrophic. The time allotted for this debate has expired.